Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what C name records are within the context of the domain name system. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, I invite you to stick around. All right guys, just so we're all on the same page here, a C name record, also known as a canonical name record, is just one of many resource record types in the domain name system. In the most basic sense, a CNAME record maps one domain name to another. In this example, bar.example.com is an alias for the canonical name foo.example.com. In all cases, the canonical name must always be another domain name and can never be an IP address. This is the biggest difference between CNAME records and A records. A records map domain names to IP addresses, while CNAME records map domain names to other domain names. This can come in handy when you have multiple services running on a single server that share the same IP address, like a website and an FTP server. In this case, you can use a CNAME record to point ftp.example.com and www.example.com to the DNS entry for example.com, which in turn has its own A record which points to the IP address for this server. Then in the future, if the IP address ever changes, you would only have to change the A record. Now, there is one tiny drawback to using CNAME records specifically for the purpose of subdomains. Take, for example, the fact that you can create an A record for store.example.com and have this point directly to your server's IP address. This is a very valid way to create a subdomain. Now, on the other hand, you can accomplish the same thing with a CNAME record that points to example.com. The only problem with this is that when a visitor goes to store.example.com, the DNS server has to do two DNS lookups, one for the C name record and one for the A record before it finally gets the IP address, while as with the first example, there is only one DNS lookup needed. In certain situations where the DNS resolver has optimized cache or doesn't have to bounce around for the additional query, the performance difference is negligible, but I still think it's worth to point out the difference here. Now, in order to create a CNAME record, go to your domain registrar. In this case, we'll use the domain name netwits.io. In the DNS section, make sure that an A record already exists and choose the CNAME record type. For the alias, you can either type in the full subdomain or just the subdomain part. And for the canonical name, you can either type in the full domain name or just an at symbol instead. And there is your CNAME record. Typically, in a few minutes to a few hours later, you can query the CNAME record. You can do this with a website like dnschecker.org by changing the record type to CNAME and typing in the domain name. As you can see here, the value of netwits.io shows up as the canonical name. You can also use the dig command to look up the CNAME record with dig bar.netwits.io CNAME, and you'll see that we get the same netwits.io value as a result. You will have to do a separate query in order to get the actual IP address, or as an alternative, you can use the nslookup command, which will tell us that bar.netwits.io has a canonical name of netwits.io and that it has the expected IP address. That's it for CNAME records. Check out some of my other DNS record videos over here. Subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.